Okay, good morning again. Mazal tov to Avi Habat. Amir, we're so happy for you. And Zat Hashem, may the Divrei Torah that we learn now also be in merit of Naomi. Bezat Hashem. Come, let's open him a book. Can we give it to him? We're going to start with today's Talmud. Today's Talmud is fascinating. It's a very famous uh, story to many, halakha to others. Let's look at the following story. This, this, this Gemara is found in Masechet Shabbat on page Memtet. Let me show it to you where it is. Okay, are we ready? Amar, we're going to try no interruptions today. So this way we're able to get to the Gemara as quick as possible. All right, although it's going to be fascinating, but no interruptions, let's try. Amar Avyanai, Tfilin Srichin Guf Naki Kelisha Bal Kinafaim. Ravyanai teaches in the Talmud that a one who dons Tefillin, if you put on Tefillin, you need to have a clean body. So what does that mean, Guf Naki? Like Elisha, Baal Knafaim, the certain individual we're going to see, it's not Elisha, Eliyahu and Avi's uh, <laughs> disciple, it is Elisha, Baal Knafaim. He's called Elisha, the, the, the one of the wings. So let's look at what this is. Maihi, what's going on over here? Amar When one wears, we know this famous halakha, when one is wearing tefillin, we're not allowed to pass gas. Not allowed to pass gas, relieve oneself in any way possible, okay? Burping, on the other hand, is allowed, okay? <laughs> okay, but, I mean, it's not proper, but if it has to, you have to. If one's wearing tefillin, there's no exception, you cannot pass gas. Okay, uh, just although normally we're not supposed to get into it, but just very quickly, if one does have to, they need to hold themselves in order to pull off their tefillin. If they don't have enough time to pull off their tefillin, what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to move your tefillin. Move, your, move it out of the way, because then it's not on you. Right? And then... <laughs> and, and, also move, and also move the hand one. Why? We, both. And I'll explain the reason. Imagine you take an outlet, sorry, a socket, sorry, an outlet, and you put it into the socket. If you plug it in, it's in. If you take this outlet and you plug it into the wall, you gonna get any of the electricity? None at all. As soon as the tefillin are not in its proper place, it's not on, it's not even on. If the tefillin are too low, if the tefillin are on the side, if the hand is sticking out over here, if it's not in its proper spot, now it's not like it's a one dot proper spot, but there is an area which is considered for it to be proper its place in the socket. If not, it's not even on. So therefore it works for us in, in our merit and our dismerit. In our merit, if we need, want it to pass gas quickly, you just move it. In our dismerit, for those who don't know where to put the tefillin, unfortunately it's as if they're not, uh, they're not wearing it. So that's what he says first. Rava amar shiloy shanbaim. Rava says don't sleep in it. When you're wearing tefillin, don't sleep. We also know when you're wearing tefillin, you can't eat. Because when one eats, that promotes passing gas. When one sleeps, they have no control over passing gas, and therefore no eating, no sleeping in order to not pass gas. So now this is the famous story. Why is he called Elisha Bal Knafaim? Elisha, the, the one with wings. What, what, what wings are we talking about? So listen to this. One time there was a decree given to the Jewish people that they are not allowed to wear tefillin. They're going to peg out, they're going to nail in his head. If a person puts, yeah, you put tefillin on your head, then we're going to show you tefillin. So look at it. Not only would Elisha wear them for tefillah, but they used to wear it all day long back then. He used to wear it and even go out in the streets. Okay. One of the uh, army people, one of the security police officers, they saw him. Sorry, he saw them. Ratsmi pana harav. He was running away from the guy who was trying to chase him to catch him wearing tefillin. They came and she got slow. Natlam roshov achzan biado. As soon as the officer came to Elisha, he took it off his head and he held it in his hand. What happened? Amarlo maze biadcha. What's in your hand? He said, Amarlo kanfe yona. I'm holding. I'm holding a dove. You're holding a dove? I don't believe you. Pashat et yado. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna speak about it. Pashat et yado venimtseu kanfe yona. And he had a miracle. He opened. He, imagine. Imagine. You take off your tefillin. You hold the tefillin in your hand. All of a sudden, what's in there? Boom! It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a dove. So look at this. Lefikah korin oto Elisha bal And that's why he's named Elisha, the one of the wings. So thank you, Mayor, for bringing it up to me. Our minhag, our tradition, is when we when we wrap our tefillin 
we wrap our tefillin. This is an interesting one because I've seen these are these look like really, really like wings, right? But really, really, these go under. They go under like this, and the wings are over here. The two wings, which protect the which protect the dove, also protect the tefillin. It's our it's our it's our tradition. It's not a halakha. If you didn't wrap it like that, you still fulfilled your mitzvah. But one uh, one side on each side to resemble. To resemble a dove based on this story. But now the Gemara asks, one second, Umay shna kanfei yona mishar ofot. Why a dove? Why not an eagle? Why not a pigeon? Why not a chicken? A chicken's kosher? Look what he says. Mishum, no, more, more. Mishum de imtila kneset Israel yona. Because the Jewish people is compared to a Yona. In what way? Very nice. Rab Baruch is going to explain us. Shneemar kanfe Yona nechpa vakas vakesef. That the that the um, wings of a Yona protect it almost like something special. What does that mean? Ma Yona knafe miginotalea. A, 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 a dove. What protects the dove? Its wings. wings. Af Israel mitzvot meginot alehen. What are our wings as Jewish people? At our filin. wings are our mitzvot. At filin. Tfilin, tzaka, Talmud Torah. All of our mitzvot are our wings which protect us. So therefore, he was named Inishak Bal, bal, kna, bal Knafaim. And this is how we wrap our tefillin. And we understand now that what protects us is our mitzvot. Moving on to today's Musar, which is one of the most fundamental questions. Tell, tell them to come over. The guy standing there, tell them to come. Come, join us. <laughs> Take a chair, come, come. The Musar this morning is from Rav Nisim Gaon. We were learning last week's Rav Sadia Gaon. Rav Nisim Gaon, he's going to come and answer us one of the most fundamental questions. Gentlemen, listen to this. One of the most fundamental questions we're about to answer. Why do good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? Sometimes. Sometimes. No, why could it happen like that? Right? Someone does good, they should have good done to him. Someone does bad, you should get a treha. You should be... Right? So let's look at the following. Let's see where we are? The Musar? Mm -hmm. If you see a wicked individual, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu bestowed him with a lot, a lot of good. He gave every, all of this to him in this world. If Shar, okay, first thing is we never know. We don't know Hashem's calculations. That's why he says very clearly, if Shar, it could be. Because nobody can get up and say, I know why something good happened to something good, and something good happened to something bad, someone bad, and vice versa. It could be, he says, that he did do a good deed in this world. Venotel sechar kan kedeshu nifraim imenu ba'olam hazeh. Agadosh Baruch Hu wants to give him all of his. Sorry, kedeshu shiyu nifraim imenu ba'olam hazeh. He wanted to give him. This person did something good. Hashem wanted to give only that one good merit in this world. He'll be healthy. He'll be rich. He'll be happy. He'll have a lot, but only in this world, so that he could be paid back for all of his wickedness in the next world. And how do we translate that? So Aramaic for all of us who learn Gemara, which means Hashem pays back to those who hate Him, to those who are not right. Tavan good the inun avdin because they are doing kadmohi behayehon leovdehon. He's giving them in this world in order to finish them up here, and they won't have in the next world. Machshilo b'shilum gemulo ki ibu chasa ba'olam az Hashem. He's going to give him. He's going to give him everything in this world. The person is not doing the right things. Hashem is going to do good for him in this world. Ah, he's thinking he's doing good. No, no. Hashem is giving that person. Again, it's none of us, baruch Hashem. But Hashem is going to give that person here in this world all of the good that he deserves for the small good that he did, in order that in the next world, he's going to roast on high fire. Serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also have to be getting that's why. Now it works the opposite. You have a righteous man, a very, very good person. And he did a couple of things that are not perfect. A couple of things which are not good. HaKadosh Baruch Hu miyasiro ba'olam hazeh ki shiur ma shemi markin avonotav kide shiye lo asachar ba'olam haba umshalem kod tzlukav latiz avo. Hashem says, you know, in this world, I'll make it hard for him. This is a tzadik v'tov lo. 
sorry, Tzadik Viralo, only in this world. In this world, it's going to make him a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, so that it's going to be 100% <coughs> bliss and enjoyment and reward in the Olam Ha'emet, in, in the afterworld. Davar Zen Ne'emar B'Talmudin of Talmud Eretz Yisrael. This concept is not, a, is, is not a concept that Rav Nisim Gaon is inventing. It's in our Talmud, in the Babylonian Talmud, in the Yushalmi Talmud. But he says as follows, Vanu Maskirim Kan Ma Shemru B'Talmud Eretz Yisrael, Lefi Shetafsu Bo Derech Tzai. He's going to tell it to us now in a very short way that we'll understand it well. Look at the following. Vechen Amru, Rubo Zachiyot, Umiyuto Averot. You have an individual who has a lot of good, and a little bit of bad. Mi'uto averot sh'yesh b'yadu nifrim mimenu ba'olam azeh. Why? Kedeh lifra lo sachar mishalem latid lavo. So a person has a lot of good, a little bit of bad. The bad is going to be what shows in this world, and that's what he's going to be given in order that it'll be all best in the next world. And then the opposite, the same thing. Rubo averot mi'uto zachiyot. Notnim lo sachar mitzvot kalot sh'yesh b'yadu ba'olam azeh. Kedeh lifra mimenu mishalem la'olam haba. Same, just exactly the opposite. Rubo Averot, Yoresh Geinom, Rubo Zachiot, Yoresh Gan Eden. Bezat Hashem, we'll all do more mitzvot, more mitzvot, so we'll be by Gan Eden. We're going to move on to the halachot of Bikur Cholim. You have it over there, but I'm going to read it. We'll get to it in a moment. Okay. We're going to, we're learning now the halacha of Bikur Cholim. Bezat Hashem, we should have no Cholim, but we know that there are many, many individuals who need the refuah and need to be visited for refuah shlema. So this morning, the Shulchan Aruch in the, in the Halakha is going to go through some Halakhot of Bikur Cholim, very important. I'm going to read it out of the Shulchan Aruch because there's a couple additions over here, but you can follow in the, in the, in the, Mus- in the Halakha over there. Mitzvah Levaker. Mitzvah Levaker Cholim Hakrovim Vechavirim Nichnasim Miyad Verehokim Achar Shlosha Yamim. So it's as follows. It's a mitzvah to visit the sick people. Where do we learn this mitzvah? Where's the first place in our Torah that we visit? Very good. This week's parasha. So it's not by chance, by the way, that this is the halakha over here. The Hida, who instituted saying the Musar and the halakha and Chokli Israel, he knew exactly when and where to add it in. So the mitzvah Bikur Kulim is specifically in this week's parasha, because this is one of the main sources, the first time in the Torah we see someone visiting someone else because they were sick. The three angels came to visit Avraham Avinu. And then he says, close people and friends, meaning family members and close friends, they could come in right away. As soon as they hear someone sick, they jump to go visit him and help him everything. Rehokim ahar shiloshayamin. Others who are not so close, wait three days. Imagine someone gets sick and then the whole world is there. They can't breathe, they can't, they can't even help themselves, they can't let anyone help themselves. So therefore, you have to know how close you are to the person to know how soon to go visit him. Vim kafatzalavaholi. But if it was a, by shock, something tragic that happened, everyone's allowed to come as soon as possible. This is a very important halakha. If you're older than the person who's sick, you still have a mitzvah. Although he owes you honor because you're his elder, nevertheless, you should go and visit him even though he's younger because now he is sick. You should go and visit people if it's proper, obviously. Even many times a day, more than once a day, if they need it. Vafilu ben gilo. What's ben gilo? So same age is as follows. It means that you were born the same time as the person and you have the same mazal as him. We know that a person who has the same mazal as the sick person takes off one sixtieth of their sickness. Yeah. Has to be the same. If you have the same mazal, you take off one sixtieth. So look what he says. Afilu ben gilo. That every time he goes in, he takes off one sixtieth. He can go in 60 times in one day. It doesn't matter. More and more and more, it helps. However, it doesn't take off one six. It always takes off one sixty of sixtieth of the remaining. Okay. Meaning, if that person goes 60 times, it's not like he's done. It's always one sixtieth of the remaining. So one time I thought of, of an idea. So there we go. 60, but enter in the same room at the same time. Maybe, maybe we should try it. We should not have the opportunity to try it, but but it would be something interesting because it's always one sixtieth of the remaining. Next, anytime you visit more and more and more, that's proper, it's nice. This is very important. In order, and as long as you don't cause pain or discomfort to the sick person. There's no mitzvah if the sick person needs to rest. Or if it, this is sometimes hard. Sometimes you go all the way to the hospital and the person's sleeping. It's not proper to wake him up 
wake her up if they're if they're sleeping. You you you, you never know. You, it, 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 you, so it depends. It depends when. Depends who. Depends how. But a person has to know that when they come and they visit, <laughs> this is a, this is a big a big. Uh, rule and fundamental in when it comes to chesed make sure the chesed you're doing for someone is good for them and not good for you when you're going to do something for someone else don't don't do it because it's going to benefit you you're doing it for them don't uh, visit exactly this concept don't visit somebody don't give like imagine you have something that you want to give away oh, i'm a big tzaddik I'm, I'm giving my stroller that I've already used for my other kids to someone who needs the stroller but what, what do you need more? do you care more that that person has a stroller or do you care more to get rid of your stroller? <laughs> no seriously all of those probably both probably, <laughs> but every, every single case is dependent and Hashem knows what a person's, what a per, what's in a person's heart Hashem knows very clearly so it's very important the Rama, you don't have it in here but I'm going to add it in it's amazing the Rama on the Shulchan Aruch says some say that someone that you hate, you're allowed to go visit, and some say not. And some say you're allowed to go visit an Avel, that's your enemy, and some say not. And Halakha, the Ramah says, that if you're a person that is your enemy, don't go visit him, and don't go to his Bet Avel. Why? Listen to this. Because, because some will think, or maybe you might have the feelings of, Magialo, it's good for him. Or, or he deserves it. Or, or you know, you're, put, you're rubbing it in his face. The, your, your enemy got into a car accident. Ah, of course, you're the first one to visit him. You, you hope he'll croak. Chas v'shalom. So that's a very important halakha. Now, it could depend on the situation. But in general, you don't have your first encounter with your enemy when he's sick or when he is a, a mourner. Halakha gimel. Uh, it depends the situation. It always depends. What your enemy died? Yeah. You got mm, I don't know. Your enemy died n to not. Tr uh, again, <laughs> uh, on the opposite, you need to ask forgiveness. You have to come and ask forgiveness. Uh, I think so. But again, you have to make it in a way that it doesn't. It's not obvious, or it's not even. People don't even think like, "Wow, the enemy is happy that he died." You have to. It's all sensitivities on on what you feel and what the others feel and what. Obviously, Gimel. Okay, this is not practical. Nowadays, you're allowed to obviously go to the hospital and sit on the chair. You don't need to be standing up. Although the Shulchan Aruch says the Shechina is right there by a sick person, so have respect for it. However, it's explained that when they were lying down on the floor because they didn't have beds, that's when you're not allowed to sit down next to them and to lie down next to them. But now, since they're on a bed, an elevated bed, you're definitely allowed to sit on a chair right the next to them. On the bed? A what? What if you see that on the bed, but you're not sitting you're not next to them, it's the same problem? No, no, it's fine. No. It's fine. Sometimes especially if someone, essentially if someone, if it's someone, if it's someone close. No, no, halakha I say you're allowed to sit in front of a sick person, and especially when you go visit them. Do you have halakha dalit there also? Yes. Okay, halakha dalit. Last one. This is again going back to the concept of do what's good for the sick person. Do what's good for what you, who you're giving a chesed to, doing a chesed for. Don't go the first three hours of the day to visit a sick person. So that's, so that's the first thing. A person in the beginning of the day when he's sick, he's weak. Let him snap into it, let him get into a mood before you come and visit. Same thing. And then a person, the, the concept is as follows. When you see a person so sick, you're going to give up praying for the person. So don't go in the beginning when he's so sick of the day and don't go at the end of the day when he's, when he's suffering and very sick also. Go when it would be his opportune time, his optimal time of the day, the best possible. So this when you see him, you have hope, and, and you, you, you see that there could be a salvation and, you, and your prayers will be stronger for him. Now I'll add in, because you don't have it over there, but I'll add it in and we'll end the shuru this. The Rama adds, Vechol shebiker velo bikesh alav rahamim. Anyone who goes and visits a sick person and doesn't pray on behalf of that person, whether it's then, whether it's later, later that day, whenever it is, if a person does not pray for the sick person he goes to visit, lo kiyema mitzvah. He didn't fulfill the mitzvah Bikur Cholim. Bikur Cholim is not only, so let's just summarize it, we'll finish. Let's summarize it. Bikur Cholim is A, doing what's good for that person. Visiting them at a time where it is good for them. Not overdoing your stay, not prolonging your stay. And also, very important, to make sure 
to pray for the person that you go and visit. B'zat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu will mirapay all the Cholim of Amo Yisrael and B'zat Hashem that when there is a situation we'll be able to fulfill the mitzvah in its opportune and best way. B'zat Hashem. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve Amen. Rebichai Amrak Shaomer. Tzaga Hosh Baruch Hu Zakotet Yisrael. Lefichach Yerba Lehem Torah Mitzvot Shana.